Hello and welcome our bloggers to RTD News English Edition. As usual, we bring to you the major and top highlights of tonight. Celebration of the 10th anniversary of SOS Children's Village in Djibouti. Ministry of Women and Family. And on the international scene, in Beirut, the toll of victims of the Israeli raid near the Hariri Hospital is growing. Those were the major and top highlights. Welcome back to our newsroom, our beloved viewers. Late this morning, the Prime Minister, Mr. Abdul Ghadir Kamil Mohammed, received a delegation from Gabon's Servant Wealth Fund in audience at the Prime Minister's office. The delegation was made up of Mr. Sanidi Itali, Deputy Managing Director, uh, Mr. Amisah Serge, Director of Investment, Mr. Musavo Philip Xavier, accompanied by the Director of the Servant Carbon Agency, and the Minister for the Environment and Sustainable Development, Mr. Mohammed Abdul Ghadir Musahilim. Djibouti, which is particularly vulnerable to climate change, has integrated sustainability into its national strategy, positioning itself as an inventor in carbon management thanks to the Servin uh, Car Carbon Initiative launched by the Presidential Decree. This initiative reflects the country's commitment to combating climate change and achieving a 40% reduction in its greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 in line with the objectives of the Paris Agreement. This meeting is part of the wider dynamic of regional cooperation in the face of global climate challenges, uh, reinforcing Djibouti's role as a pioneer in climate initiatives in Africa. Finally, the Prime Minister also stressed the importance of strengthening South-South cooperation, encouraging closer cooperation between countries in the South. Further exploration of uh, this concept of cooperation could also identify potential partners in the African region and the long-term benefit of such an approach for Djibouti. The Prime Minister, Mr. Abdul Ghadir Kamil Mohammed, received this morning in his office Mr. Agbisi Kumla Amua, the new representative of the World Food Program, WFP, in Djibouti, to discuss ways to enhance cooperation with local institutions. During this meeting, several areas of cooperation were discussed, including the partnership with the National Office for Relief and Assistance for Refugees, ONARS, discussions centered on strengthening support for refugees and disaster victims, uh, given the importance of the issue in light of migration flows in the region. The talks also addressed the partnership between the Ministry of Health, especially with regard to providing food assistance to pregnant women and children, emphasizing the importance of nutrition for these vulnerable groups. Discussions also uh, included support to the education sector, as WFP has a partnership with the Ministry of National Education and Functional Training to support students through food aid and education programs. As part of strengthening cooperation, the Prime Minister recommended a closer partnership with the Ministry of Solidarity and Social Protections, stressing the importance of joint work to address challenges related to social protection. He also proposed the establishment of a special health center to respond to migration issues, uh, such as an urgent matter given the large influx of migrants uh, the country is facing. On the sidelines of the annual meetings of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, the Minister of Economy and Finance, Mr. Elias Musa Dawali, participated in the strategic meeting of the African High-Level Task Force on the Global Financial Architecture. The meeting was organized under the aspects of dignitaries, including the Director of IMF's African uh, Department. The meeting not only addressed key issues related to financial management, but also reinforced the synthesis on the need for international solidarity to address ongoing economic challenges. Through these efforts, the African High-Level Task Force aspires to create a more equitable and inclusive framework for Africa's economic development while laying the foundation for uh, enhanced cooperation between African countries and global financial authorities. A high-level delegation from the Republic of Djibouti, led by Mr. Elias Musa Dawali, Minister of Economy and Finance in charge of industry, held an important meeting with Mr. Usman Diouni, Vice President of the World Bank for the Middle East, East and North African region. The meeting, which took place in an atmosphere of mutual cooperation, also saw the participation of several key figures from the Djiboutian government, including Mr. Ismail Ibrahim Roble, Minister of Budget, and Mrs. Maryam Hamadou Ali, Minister Delegate in Charge of Digital Economy. Discussions centered on strengthening the strategic partnership between Djibouti and the World Bank, with a particular focus on the need to promote inclusive growth. Participants emphasized the importance of a dynamic private sector capable of generating jobs, especially for the youth, who make up a large part of the population. A key point in the discussions was the need to increase the resilience of vulnerable communities, especially in urban areas, as well as the state's assistance in managing financial systems. Participants also discussed supporting the country to, uh, to strengthen infrastructure, both digital and energy, while ensuring the development opportunities are available to all. 
Chaired by Parliament member Mr. Shamaki Musaari, the Parliament's Economy, Finance and Public Planning Committee held a meeting today to discuss, to discuss a draft law concerning the ratification of two draft laws concerning the ratification of financial accounts of the Military Pension Fund for the year 2023, a draft law relating to the ratification of the financial accounts for the Djibouti Electricity Company EDD for the year 2022. Members of the government were represented by the Minister of Defense in Charge of Relations with Parliament, Mr. Hassan Umar Mohammed, and the Minister of Energy and Natural Resources, Mr. Yunus Ali Gidi. After an exchange of views and fruitful discussions, uh, the members of the Finance and Public Economy uh, Committee approved the aforementioned bills and referred to the next plenary session for the National Assembly for adoption. Under the patronage of the Minister of Higher Education Scientific Research, a well-known research and studies and organized conference dedicated to the role of essential oils in the fire sensor. Scientific meetings together international experts, demonstrating the richness of the partnership between Djibouti Research and the State Center and the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. Within the work of the Biotech Net project, the event started with an introduction that highlighted the importance of exchange in local capacities in medical research. These conferences provide a unique opportunity for local research students and practitioners to deepen their knowledge on the therapeutic potential essential oils which are increasingly being studied for their high cancer properties. This aims to provide high quality training and promote international cooperation in the field of biotechnology. The research projects resulting from the collaboration focus on um, pressing public health issues, issues such as uh, cancer and aim to provide innovative solutions based on natural resources. This initiative also underscores Djibouti's commitment to becoming a major player in medical uh, research in Africa while exploring accessible and natural solutions to respond to public health challenges. Uh, this initiative will enhance the prospects for international collaboration in the field of health, offering a promising future for the integration of natural medicine into anti-cancer world. The director of the center welcomed the attendees and stressed the importance of the role of essential oils in the fight against cancer. He pointed out that cancer is a major health challenge which calls uh, for exploring new and innovative solutions. He pointed to the partnership with the International Center for um, Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology in the BiotechNet project which enhances local medical research capabilities. For his part, the Minister of Higher Education and Scientific Research stressed the International Center for uh, Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology in collaboration with several local entities in Djibouti organized a two-day workshop as part of the Cancer Awareness Week with a special focus to cancer affecting women. He also praised the efforts of the organizer, organizers and the fruitful cooperation between the International Center and national institutions, noting that this cooperation promotes scientific research and provides an opportunity to share research and exchange experiences among participants. The non-governmental organization SOS Village in Djibouti celebrated its 10th anniversary this morning at the Isla Grand Hotel under the theme No Child Should Grow Up Alone. In the presence of a uh, number of citizens and partners, the Djibouti SOS Villages uh, commemorated its 10 years of work and support for children and young people who have lost uh, parental care or who may be at risk of losing for various reasons. During this celebration, videos were showing as part of the testimonies where the Minister of Women and Family, Mrs. Muna Usman Aden, and some officials from the organization expressed their views on the activities. Uh, this important event brought together many participants, including members of the government, the regional 
regional director of SOS Villages as well as staff from the MSF of Djibouti, led by the Director General, Mr. Omar Delita Mohammed, representatives of the diplomatic community uh, and a large number of civil society representatives. Since its establishment in 2014, SOS Djibouti currently supports more than 1,200 children and young people forced to live in unfavorable conditions. In SOS, we believe in every child's right to grow up in a protective family. Therefore, we develop capacities in families and communities to prevent violence and family separation. We promote suitable alter alternative care options for those children who have lost parental care and reunite them with their families and communities whenever possible. Forty young people lead independent lives. This is at the core of who we are as SOS Children's Villages. In his speech, the regional director of SOS Villages stated that the organization's mission is um, a humanitarian action aim aimed at helping children from the most vulnerable families. For her part, the Minister of Women and Family, Mrs. Muna Usmanadan, expressed her happiness to participate in such an occasion. Today, EVA and SOS Sahil organize a critical public debate at the headquarters on sectoral public policies related to climate change and water and sanitation. The event is part of a project funded by the European Union through the PASOC program and aims to give a voice to civil society in Djibouti. The meeting focused on enabling civil society to share their views on current public policies where participants had the opportunity to discuss issues related to the management of water and sanitation resources as well as the impacts of climate change on local communities. The project titled Supporting the Participation of Djiburian Civil Society in the Devi Definition and Implementation of Sectoral Public Policies aims to strengthen the role of local organizations in decision-making processes, enabling them to effectively influence the formulation of public policies. During the discussion, participants expressed their desire to increase civil society participation in the policy implementation phase, uh, especially through regular consultations and transparent monitoring mechanisms. The Chief of the General Staff of the Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim, presided this morning over the closing of the third seminar dedicated to transmission officers and non-commissioned officers. On his arrival, he was welcomed by Colonel Mohammed Waiz Habani, uh, Grayson Major, and Lieutenant Colonel Saeed Abdullah Hussein, Commander of the Bat Trans. The Chief of the Defense Staff then reviewed the troops uh, composed of elements of the Guard of Honor. Also present were the Head of State for Defense, Brigadier General Tahir Ali Muhammad, the Djibouti Head of State for Defense, Colonel Muhammad Gayad Gelli, and the heads of uh, the Djibouti Garrison Corps, direct Directors and Service Chiefs. The seminar, which began last Monday and ends today, was chaired by Lieutenant Colonel Siad Abdullah Hussein. Uh, the aim was to improve the quality of the weapons of transmission and to speak the same language, as well as to secure and protect information equipment in the place of transmission. In addition, the Chief of the General Staff of the Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim, uh, attended a presentation made by the Commander of Bad Trans to explain the purpose of this transmission seminar. The seminar was a forum for discussion and consultation between all those involved in ADF communications. After three days of work, solutions will be found and compiled in a memento. There was also a presentation of a transmission command post within the various radios. This initiative to hold, the initiative to hold this seminar came from the signals uh, command to facilitate the work of the corps commander and the signals officers. To find out about the problems linked to the difficulties that may arise within the Djiburian army uh, transmission cells.
the ceremony ended with the presentation of a gift accompanied by a memento book. The letter summarizes the knowledge and expertise relating to the transmission weapon, uh, symbolizing the commitment to passing on knowledge and promoting the history of this speciality. The Regional Council of Tejora successfully um, hosted the third mission to follow up and reevaluate the projects um, funded under the Project Civil Society for Governments and Local Development in Djibouti, implemented by the Association of Francophone Mayors and funded by the European Union. The mission aimed to assess the progress of local projects and strengthen the capacities of the beneficiary associations, handing over essential equipment to the Barry and GFSB Association to support the implementation of the projects on the ground. The handover ceremony was attended by a number of dignitaries, including the President of the Tajora Regional Council, Mr. Umar Hussein, the representatives of the Ministry of uh, Decentralization, Mrs. Fatuma Yusuf, the Permanent Secretary of the National Association of Local Authorities of Djibouti, Mr. Ali Adar Rufa, as well as members of the two associations and the project management team. This initiative comes as part of efforts to um, strengthen the capacities of local communities to face the challenges of climate change and support uh, women's productive activities, as the equipment provided will contribute to strengthening and developing local capacities. The National Agency for State Information Systems, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Women, launched an awareness campaign on protecting children from the harms of the Internet. This awareness and information session was held uh, at the community development centers. The aim of this campaign is to sensitize parents, children, and youth to the risks associated with online harm. The campaign also aims to educate children on good practices for using a digital technology, Internet, and social media, and provide them with the tools to adopt good reactions and responsible behavior, uh, awareness teams uh, educated parents and youth about the dangers of the digital world with a focus on the internet and the misuse of social media. Shifting gears towards the international scene now, the death toll from the Israeli air raid near the Hariri Hospital in the southern suburbs of Beirut has risen to 13, including a child and 57 injured. The Lebanese Ministry of Health announced yesterday the Public Health Emergency Operations Center, which is officially related to the Ministry of Health, announced in a press release that the raid by the Israeli enemy in the uh, area of Al Jannah near the Hariri Hospital led to the death of 13 people, including a child, while the number of injured rose to 57. He explained that among the victims were 17 wounded. Those injuries uh, required hospitalization, the condition of seven of them being considered critical. And last but not least, tomorrow we invite you to join us for an exclusive podcast featuring Mr. Mahmoud Ali Yusuf, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Djibouti. He is currently a candidate for the uh, chairmanship of the African Union Commission. In this in-depth interview, Mr. Yusuf will outline his vision for Africa's future, addressing key issues such as regional cooperation, economic development, and security challenges. His insights will be invaluable as he shares his plans for strengthening unity and collaboration among African nations. Stay with us for this important event. Well, by this, our blog viewers, we finally conclude this edition. Thank you for being with us and make sure to tune in later for more as usual. Have a wonderful evening and take care.